What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to get a shop tour of one of the sickest hot rod shops here in Texas, RMS Customs and Fab. All right guys, so this shop is near and dear to my heart because Milo actually showed me a lot of things, building my cars, how to do wiring. I learned some fabrication. I even learned some welding when I was working here when I was straight out of college before I started doing media. So that's why I wanted to do this shop first, but let me not keep talking. Let's get in there and meet up with Milo and uh, get a shop tour. What's up, man? Hey, man. What's going on? What are you looking at? Oh, it's just right here looking over uh this uh, Mustang 68 Mustang Fastback that we uh, ended up doing a Detroit Speed uh, full quadrilink system on it. So, so if yeah. I'm not mistaken, this is one of the first cars I started working on, right? No, 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 This no, isn't no. the one? This isn't the one, no, the 66. Oh. 66 Mustang is the one that you're working on. No, this, this customer, is, uh, his name is John Jewett. Um, he actually uh, came in, uh, wanted to do some upgrades on his vehicle and uh, um, one of the things he wanted to do was, uh, um, besides uh, doing the upgrades like on the engine and um, transmission, he actually wanted to do a, a full suspension upgrade on the vehicle. Wanted something he can just drive, not worry about issues, have good brake systems and stuff like that. So uh, we ended up doing a full Quadralink rear uh, Detroit speed suspension with a four nine inch um, uh, differential and yeah. a full uh, quick performance uh, fab housing on the back. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we also threw in a, um, a gear vendor, so he still has his six, C6 transmission with a three-speed, okay, but he, wanted, uh, he wants to drive it so, uh, on the freeway, so we actually threw a, a gear, uh, an overdrive on the transmission, so we added an overdrive to a three-speed transmission, so um, the gear vendors, you could either set it up as manual or you can set it up automatic once it reaches a certain speed. It kicks in the overdrive, or you can do it manually whenever you want. And then you're just highway cruising. Yep. Now I know that sounded cool. like that was a hell of an intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so tell the uh, tell the audience here like what you guys do here. I know what you do here because I used to work here. Yeah. So basically, what we do, man, is uh, uh, we're RMS Customs and Fab, which is a resto mod shop. We do a lot of resto mods, uh, pro touring builds. Um, customers want to come in and they just say, hey, uh, I'm looking to get my car a little bit more, have a little bit more modern technology in the system, um, in the vehicle, just, you know, do an LS swap, uh, Coyote swap, LT swap, um, full suspension um, upgrades and stuff. So we end up doing that um, and full, you know, rewire the cars. Cause I mean, these yeah. vehicles are old, you know? So there's only, <laughs> you could only add so much to to these vehicles with the uh, original old wiring harness that's like 35 plus years. You yeah, know? No, I so. got my fair share of wiring. That, so the first Mustang I did, which I thought was this one, which is not, I thought I wanted a classic Mustang and I started working on it. And then I was like, these are things are way too small. I used to get more upset than anything because I couldn't fit in it. Yeah. Because we did the Dakota digital gauges and the uh, vintage air system on that one. Yep. Yeah, that was a neat car. I didn't, I didn't realize it was gone. Yeah, yeah, it's a '66 Mustang. That one, yeah, that one, uh, that was your first vehicle that you, uh, uh, we threw you in. You yeah. Know, as far as uh, on the aftermarket world, you know. Yeah, because so, everything, everything was pretty much aftermarket. Yeah, everything one. aftermarket, and then you got a good taste of how things are supposed to fit, but they actually <laughs> don't fit. Yeah. You know, so. But yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is '68 Fastback, so it's pretty cool. Um, as you can see here. Um, you know, we, we love Detroit Speed. So here's a, this is a full uh, um, subframe um, from Detroit Speed. Um, this is going on a, on a second gen Camaro. So yeah, oh, pretty dang. excited on this one. So yeah, this one's gonna be pretty cool, man. It's gonna second gen Camaro uh, uh, LS motor with the Pro Charger. Should be making about eight, 900 at the wheels. So that one's gonna be a Pro Touring build. Pro Touring build, yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much like when I started doing Optima, <clears throat> I saw a second gen Camaro like on the internet, it was Brian Hobo, mm -hmm. however you pronounce his last name. Yeah, Hobo. <laughs> yeah, it was orange, and I was like, how is that car turning like that? And that's yeah. how I got into modifying my Challenger to make it actually handle like that. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that I learned, I actually got from him, like suspension setup, alignment setup. In fact, I don't know what you know about drifting, but you're gonna align my drift car once it's ready. 
Yeah, who just uh, do a lot of steering angle <laughs> on it, you know? That's I got the uh, I got the coilovers uh, steering angle kits coming soon. Yeah, 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 definitely. You, I mean, you already know we're here, so. Yeah, I don't. I really don't trust anybody else. Again, I used to work <laughs> here. The level of detail that these guys do is yeah. second to none. I appreciate that, man. We did, that definitely means a lot to us. So. I mean, you had a gun to my head. You were like, "Can you make that?" <laughs> Being there, baby, you're doing great. I'm proud of you, and Ringo's proud of you. It's almost over. Yeah. So what we got so, here? So yeah, this is uh, this is a '69. Uh, um, uh, pro turn build um, that we're doing. Um, this is actually from the owner of Expel. Um, so yeah, we, we ended up doing a flush mount glass on this. Uh, we re removed the grip rails. Oh um, yeah. yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it doesn't have any grip rails, so it has fl uh, front and rear uh, flush mount glass. Um, also, too, we uh, the handles aren't on, on on this vehicle, but this is uh, we did our custom uh, door handles on this as well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, some pretty cool. We actually even changed out the dash. Uh, 69 dash just normally looks a little bit different than that one. Um, this is actually a 67, 68 dash. Um, I'm not a big fan of the 69, neither was the owner. So we're gotcha. just like, hey, we're just, uh, let's change it something different. Um, we're actually, it's gonna get scanned and then uh, um, um, we're gonna do a lot of 3D printing and stuff like that on it too. Okay. So, so it's gonna look a little bit different than the 67, 68, but the layout's a little bit similar. To yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier, was if you can dream it, they can do it. So this is a second gen Camaro um, uh, that we're doing. This is the one with that chassis Detroit Speed. Front okay. Clip. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is also has a rear uh, the Choice Speed uh, uh, Quadrilink system on here. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty cool one, man. This is actually gonna be a uh, eight nine hundred horsepower at the wheels. And it's crazy. This is a great example of how they start. Yeah. <laughs> this right. is how. On a jig, you got Clico clips everywhere holding sheet metal in. Correct. You yeah. gonna widen the rear or anything? Uh, we did uh, the Choice Speed mini tubs on it. Uh, we're okay. not gonna widen it. Uh, he doesn't want to lose too too much of the originality of the vehicle. Yeah. So this is a uh, um, this is a perfect example of uh, of, uh, of like a Bristol mod going into the you know pro touring car. Um, nice. Usually a lot of the Bristol mods you kind of still keep it a little bit original, but it has modern stuff on it. Um, and so this is uh, this is one of that. Um, there is still going to be some stuff that we're going to do custom, but not too not, not crazy. He he loves the whole second gen look, which I love it too. Yeah. And so he doesn't want to take it take it's a away split from bumper. It. Split bumper. Oh yes. yeah, dude. yeah. Yeah. The yes, split sir. bumper Camaro. One everyone loves them. Kind of oh, rare. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. So. Got a question for you. Can you tell us the color? Uh, that's the actually. Secret. Yes, that is a secret. That's a secret that I don't hey. even know yet. <laughs> actually, yeah, what's the color of uh, the Expel one? Okay, this one's actually going to be white. Okay. It's going to be white, but it's going to have a little bit of a metallic. So it's going to be a little bit of a custom color to it. Um, we still got to mix the colors, but it is going to be white. It might have some pearl, maybe um, maybe like a Lexus, um, that Lexus white. Oh, like that gold? Yeah, like a little bit, look that, yeah, a little bit of it. So, but yeah, this one's going to be pretty pearl. cool. Sucker yeah. for pearl. Yeah, so check this out. This is the engine bay, so you can actually see. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, we can show that. Yeah. So, so fun see, fact, yeah, yeah. all this is hand-rolled. Yep, handmade, hand-rolled, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. All this is hand-rolled. Yeah, Edwin got uh, um, did all the sheet metal work on this one on the front of the, um, as, as well, he did all the lines and all the fabrication outside of the vehicle as well. So, but yeah, yeah, we ended up, uh, um, this is just a combination between Edwin and I, as far as what we're able to do with yeah, the vehicle. Yeah, I've seen you know? messing with a bunch of stuff on this one. Yes. I've yes. seen this one starting to come together. Yep. But you got a um, you got a heavy hitter that I think is going to break the internet. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah right? we got one that's, uh, and we'll go over right now to that building so you guys can check it out. So, yeah, this is one that we've been working on, um, putting a lot of detail on the vehicle itself. Um, and we'll show you guys right now. Come on, after you. This is the car that uh, uh, we've been on stop working on. Um, everything's custom on this car. The only thing probably original is, I want to say maybe is this. <laughs> yeah. 
That's it. So this, I mean, everything else has been replaced, has been done, handmade, and yeah. So, That's crazy. coming from the Optima, Optima mm -hmm. Ultimate Street Car, there was a car that you guys worked on, which was a, which is Rambo mm -hmm. Corvette, and you guys pretty much widened this thing, and everyone was asking you guys how you did it, and then the other secret is you guys widened this car so seamlessly that you can't even tell. He couldn't tell at first either. I had to point it out to him. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, we did. Uh, we wind the vehicle. I won't say too much because that's secrets of the shop. So um, just like every other shop has their own way of doing certain things. But yeah, if you look in the back, um, Edwin, uh, he's all oh, this is on handmade. He ended up. He made this uh, uh, the swoop bumper right here. He made all this, all this is all handmade. Even this section over here, he Oh, made I didn't it, realize so. that part was handmade too. Yep. So he all this, all gapping all to watch all lights, which we have our own uh, um, tail lights that, that will be uh, coming out with this vehicle itself. Those are digitals? No, no, no. These are RMS lights. They're RMS lights. These are R lights. But then you showcase them at SEMA last year? No. Yes, we showcase them. I seen my last year with our friends over there at uh, uh, Pyramid, uh, I'm sorry, Optimized Pyramid Design okay. uh, with Zach. Um, as far as uh, he showcased of the products of what he can do, which is, I mean, we're with this vehicle, we're working with him a lot. Gotcha. Um, he's actually, uh, we scanned the whole car itself, inside and out. Um, um, he's doing all the interior design. The theme on this vehicle is gonna be an F40 theme um, to an extent. So. It's obviously going to have certain things that's going to be not F40, you know, yeah. but but it's going to have a, a theme, you know. Um, and in the back of here, we scan this. It's already all body work. So this is itself. It's going to have a um, carbon fiber spoiler. So we're going to we're scanned it so that way we can make the mold. And then this is the diffuser, and this is all going to be a carbon fiber diffuser insert that goes inside there. Oh, nice. So yeah, and then this is the center section exhaust that comes out. So yeah. And then that's air. This right here is for the air jacks. So when the customer needs to go in and needs to make some changes real quick, or needs to maybe even pull out the tranny, um, we got 12, I think, I think we got, I think it was 12 or 16. We got the biggest air jacks that you can actually get. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to fit them in there, honestly. Yeah, you just connect it. I mean, this, I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna raise it this high. I mean, honestly, it's Dude. pretty, yeah, it's crazy. I need yeah, to make more just, money. Yeah. I'm still wrenching off. I'm <laughs> jacking this thing on the ground, putting some jack stands. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's gonna save so much time and money. Yeah, so he just hooks it up and the whole car just lifts up and he can do what he needs to do. And so I don't know if he likes to do, he does optimal stuff, he does autocross stuff. This is like completely, this is like way past what even optimal bills are now. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, um, uh, but basically what we wanted to do with this car, wanted to build the car so that way if in the future if he ever does want to change any other other things and add stuff to the car, he can do it. Um, the transmission is a Tremec transmission. Um, so basically it's an F-body style transmission on this vehicle itself. Um, if he does decide to go sequential um, later in the future, um, he can, uh, they do offer an F-body sequential transmission. So it's basically a remove and an Gotcha. So it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I know this vehicle, if he does to do, decide to do time attack, he can do that too. That's what I was thinking, yeah. based off everything that's yeah. been done to it. He can do time attack, he can change out the wing. Um, so basically, which is, obviously since we already have scan files, we can, make the, um, we can make the scan files and make the mounts for that, and we can have a big wing if you wanted gotcha. to, and something like that. So yeah, just all that arrow. It just depends on the category, I guess, when you're running off the yeah. road, whether what you can do, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, this car's been, everything's been done. I mean, this car's been, mine has big tubs in here. I mean, he can fit, what, 355s if he wanted to, oh so, God. and still have clearance. And he's doing forge lines? Forge lines, we have forge yeah. wheels on this one. Um, yeah, yeah, those are guys, uh, guys that we go to on wheels. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, these are, Oh yeah, that's actually pretty neat. These People are think handles? those are what, King Dig? King Dig handles? No, no, these are actually our handles. Those are your uh, handles. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this has full roll cage, it's custom made. And I've been watching this car, actually this thing was on a jig for the longest time. It was, it were, was. Yeah. Because of the amount of fabrication this car needed to get done. Yeah. Um, and we needed to just leave it on the jig for a while, you know? Um, normally the cars don't sit that long on a jig because I mean usually we just do like a quick um, suspension work on it. But this 
Uh, the company that we're using is uh, on this vehicle, uh, which is actually the company that the, the, the owner of this vehicle brought to us, um, is actually TCI. Um, okay. So we're using TCI rear, TCI front, uh, but it has been modified um, to fit the vehicle as far as on, on the stands and, uh, and the suspension mods that we did on it. Um, but overall, it's it's a TCI setup, you know. Yeah. So yeah, and those guys have been great. I mean, TCI when I needed to get certain brackets um, ordered because obviously it doesn't fit with the bolt-on kit that they offer anymore. So I need all the car brackets, just just something just to get it going. Um, I give them a call and they just ship it out to me and then just whatever I need, you know, they've been great. So. That's the best when you work with good companies that actually yeah. work with you. Yep. That's the best. And I remember, <laughs> boy, I thought I was doing something with my bills. When I saw the back end of this car <laughs> for the first time before all the sheet metal was laid in, it is, I hit it with a B-roll clip. Yeah. Yeah, the exhaust on this is pretty cool. Um, this uh, has full custom headers that I actually have built on the vehicle, built the whole full exhaust on this. Um, it, it, was, it was very challenging because this has a, it's a full exhaust all the way from the front, all the way to the back. Um, so, the train? <laughs> it must be the hour or so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost that lunch hour. Yeah, lunch hour. I do, uh, if, it's, if it's cool, you want to show underneath the hood. This yep. is They keep it down. <laughs> so, so yeah. This, this is crazy. So this is uh, this is the engine base. So Dude, it's just, I just noticed something. What's up? The dry sump. Yep. Holy cow. Yep. How big is that? So that's actually meant to hold a little over two and a half liters. Golly, that wasn't in there last time I was here, or was it? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Right? I just noticed it now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, a, it made to, to, it's meant to hold two and a half liters. As you can see, the engines, we set it back. Um, we set the engine back uh, a couple of reasons. So we needed to clear uh, this nice hood right here, or I should say this nice carbon fiber intake. Oh, uh, is that the one, is that the real one? Yeah, it's a real carbon fiber intake. Holy so, cow. So we needed to clear the hood. In order for it to clear it, we had a, drop it and we can't just drop it because we got the cross member in the front and then we got the harmonic balancer and everything so we had to drop it move it back so it clears the rack and painting mm -hmm. so i won't say how much because those are again those are specific numbers for us um but yeah and then uh and these again these headers how oh, they're all handmade so uh oh. they're two inch headers yeah did you guys make those in-house too yeah made those in -house. holy cow yeah how big is the collector? Three inch? Uh, three inch collector. Three inch collector, yes, two inch headers? Yeah, two inch headers, three inch collectors, yeah. So it goes from uh, it goes from oval to, to round. Gotcha. Oh, poor so, man. But yeah, yeah, like I said, uh, um, so again, this is a TCI front clip, but as you can see, it's uh, we also did a, um, uh, we did a front bar right here that we ended up making with our uh, brackets to so support itself, so that way make sure this thing has no flex, no movement or anything like that. Um, again, these are our spindles. Um, yep. This is something that we utilize with TCI uh, suspension, so that way uh, we can run. We're running actually. These spindles are they're designed um, to run a C7 hub with C5, C6 brakes. The reason gotcha. I did that was because a C5, C6. That's like everybody makes brake kits for those cars because every every aftermarket yeah. suspension company that when they make their uh suspension they're making it off a c5 c6 right but the best thing about um our spindles is that we're utilizing a c7 hub which is i mean those bearings on those things are massive so yeah it's I mean, like, they're proven and tested yeah, on they're numerous proven, applications exactly. yeah so so yeah so that's what we ended up doing with this system so it's like everything is Every corner of this car is bulletproof. Yep. Uh, the car does have ABS. has a Bosch Motorsport ABS. It's just a standalone. So we would it, it, uh, be able to tune it and adjust it however you want on a knob. Um, we would don't, obviously, you don't want it. You, you don't do want to have it too set. Too? It, yeah, um, we can do brake bias as wow. well. So, um, yeah, it's a front rear master owner. So, um, but yeah, it's all adjustable with that brake bias on it. And then, uh, yeah, the guys over there at PWR, um, we uh, we give them our radiator specs that we wanted and they custom made this radiator for this vehicle. So this is going to be an AC car too? AC car. <laughs> a race car. A, a race car with AC. AC and heat, man. I just noticed the condenser. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah, <laughs> AC it, car. It's going to have AC, yeah. Yeah, so obviously he's not going to be racing with the AC on. 
Um, but again, this vehicle was built also just so uh, if he wants to go driving um, during the weekend, right. we'll take it to the canyons. Yeah, California. California, AC whatever. And, you know, just go go hang out or, or whatever. You know, maybe it's a hot day, so it's just you know has AC on. So. So we talked about the headers, but we didn't talk about what what engine he chose. Yes. So the engine is actually it's an LS7. Um, it's an LS7 engine. It is a 427. It's not a stroker or anything like that. Um, we kept it as a 427, um, but it is an RMS built engine. So the engine is built here in house um, to our specs. It is a high compression engine in, engine in there with uh, our custom grind camshaft that we got for the vehicle itself, custom pistons, and, uh, um, and also a custom uh, uh, crankshaft. It's not a it's not a standard crankshaft. Forged. Um, it is a forged crankshaft. Yeah. It's a it's a lightweight crankshaft that we got in here, um, so yeah, we want this uh, 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 we want this engine to to spin at eight thousand plus RPMs and live. <laughs> oh, you can yeah. spin it at eight; it ain't so, gonna live. <laughs> yeah. The Race thing car. is, the thing is, what happens <laughs> is, uh, yeah, right. The thing what happens with this uh, uh, on the four twenty seven is. Uh, uh, when it comes to road racing, you mean the high RPMs? Always. You know, always. So we don't want to we don't want to stroke it because then we start losing you know the angle and the longevity of the block. So you know the, when you start stroking it, you you know the angle of the piston and the rod is it's not very good um, for the sonar walls. And the other yep. thing is too is that if you destroke it, which that's what a lot of people do, they get in a three D H, which is awesome. Don't get me wrong. Uh, me personally, a 3D8, uh, you tend to lose the torque that helps move the vehicle yeah. out of the corner. So let's just say you're coming out or you're going into the apex and you're getting ready to come out. Um, you got, I mean, you got to keep the engine going at such a high RPM all the time just to get the car moving. So, cause you don't have that torque anymore. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to keep the 427 cause the, the cylinder walls, everything's built for it. So. You know, it gives you the torque, and you can still keep the. You know, we don't. We're not losing the stroke. So, um, 388 for me is. It's an awesome motor. If you're gonna boost it, cause that you're you're able to. Right. Yeah. Boost it up to. Boost it up to what you need to boost it, make that power, but at the same time you gain the torque back that you lost. So it's it's a good motor. It's a 388, but you know this is the NA motor. Uh, customer uh, wanted to keep it NA, so I just kept it. With all this room. <laughs> There's gonna be some turps. May, maybe, maybe, maybe. Like, isn't there a lot of room there? Yeah. Right? There's a lot of room. There. Like up here, I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna put a big blower. Yeah, the, if the charger. customer, if the customer decides. The cool thing about this, they just say, the customer decides to put a blower or put uh, turbos. Um, the thing with the blower is that if you don't, if you can't, if you don't know how to manage the timing on the blower and the heat. I mean, and the and the heat. I mean, yeah. this thing will break the tires loose in like instant, right? So. Um, my my thing would be a turbos because it's more it's more linear. You, can, yeah. you know you can you can curve power however you want it. Um, so but yeah, if this if this customer ever decides to do whatever he wants to do, hey, just say hey, this much horsepower is not good enough anymore. I want more power. But uh, he shouldn't have a problem because power to weight ratio on this thing is going to be pretty crazy. But let's just say he does. The fuel system is set up for it. It has um, it has uh, gotcha. uh, two mounts for fuel pump fuel pump uh, modules in there so we can put whatever we want in there how much horsepower we want and we'll take it gotcha mm -hmm. which is again everything's so bulletproof it's ready for whatever you want to throw at it yeah speaking of weight what um what weight numbers are you what's your goal goal weight to hit just like every class has a has minimum. a has a minimum right we want to reach that minimum but the awesome what's awesome about this if you look at this vehicle um there's carbon fiber in the back um there's carbon fiber in the front a lot of the seals inside the middle of the vehicle. Yes. So what we want to do is if we got to add weight, we want to add it in the in the center of the vehicle, not more in the front, more in the rear. We want to just add it yeah. more in the center. Um, but if we do need to add weight, we can add weight and, and a little bit in the front. But um, yeah, we want to we want to we want to reach the minimum of whatever class he decides to run at the end. But we want to be able to add the weight where it actually is going to improve the vehicle and handle it. Yeah. So, which is obviously, it's always going to be in the middle. So. Yeah, because you don't want to throw it off. Too much weight in the back, it's squirrely. Yes. Too much weight in the front, it's going to push. It's going to push. Yeah. Right. So, I, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So, yeah, that's the building a vehicle sometimes, especially when you build it too light. 
you 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 gotta you gotta figure out how to how to add the weight and where to add it to. So yeah, put um, the power down, the grip, yeah, all that good stuff. Gra- exactly. I can't so. wait to see this thing rip. Like he better. Like, we gotta take it to a track. I don't want to see this car leave this state without me seeing it. Yeah. Run. No, the, the, the plans with this car um, is to uh, um, to once we get it up and running, um, to take it out to the track out here um, because we gotta. I mean, obviously we gotta do a lot of testing. <coughs> Excuse me. We gotta do a lot of testing on the vehicle. Um, we gotta set up the suspension. We gotta make sure everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, a lot of you testing. <coughs> so now you guys know why pretty much the only person that's gonna touch my drift car is Milo. Yes, sir. So, but yeah, this is uh, this is our uh, car that we're building, our uh, big build car right now that we have. Um, yeah, big this big build, builds, yeah. Car. <coughs> and actually one of the things I learned working here guys is I installed a ton of poly sniper EFI with the hyperspark and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like and uh, I'm having I don't know if I'm having some fuel issues or uh, uh, what is it the gas pedal return issue on the CJ7 um, but basically it's just kind of driving like crap and I can't really tell what it is so we might do a holly on that yeah yeah, I told you to do a holly on that one a long time ago. I know, because everyone's like, oh, one pump and it should crank on and turn right on. I'm like, hell no, dude. My thing is like, <laughs> it's like yeah. trying to. Well, it's cold right now, too, man. So don't think uh, it's, it's going to be starting up like nothing. I know. Yeah. And I don't know if it's my timing's off on it or what, but yeah. I just need to neutralize that. Milo, thank you so much. I know you offered to take us to lunch. Hell yeah. Look at me. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, we're about to go get some lunch. So, this is our mess Customs and Fab in Cibolo, Texas. Yes, you guys sir. see the work they can do. You know who Milo is now. You tell him your dream and he'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. One way or another, we'll make it happen. <laughs> this won't be the last time you see him because I'm no. bringing the Mustang here. <laughs> so you can uh, make it better for me. No, yeah. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you hey, so much yeah. for uh, having us in your uh, show. Um, oh, I got a show. Mm. It's been a show, your video. You know, it's been, hey, a man, pleasure. it's been a pleasure working with you guys. So. We got to do one more shout out. The cameraman, What's bro. Guys? So my name is Jose, uh, follow me on Instagram, yes underscore way underscore Jose dot JPEG. And one question for you, Milo. Yes, sir. Can you do this on the Civic or like, how can we work that out? On the Civic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it's actually outside. Yeah. You cool. can make a Civet, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, put the Corvette engine in it. I'm pretty sure we can figure something out. Let's break some, let's break some internet. Let's break some internet, right? Yeah. Well, you're going to break your bank first, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been broke. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's the first shop tours. Again, I'll put all, all the links to the Facebook, Instagram, your personal Instagram, yes. in the description below. If you guys need some work done, again, I couldn't recommend these guys. Like, I only send everybody here. Like, straight up. How many customers have you gotten from me? 100, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably like six. But, anyways, yeah. I, I always recommend this shop. They're the best. I learned a lot from here. So, all the guys asking me, like, how did you learn how to do this? I learned a lot of it from Milo. Um, brought my standard to a whole new level. And, and then. And, and Edwin, my, yeah, Edwin. Shout out Edwin. Edwin, I don't, people always ask me where I got. He's my camera shy, he by is. the way. So he he's my business partner. Um, like I said he's, you know, this car, all the other cars, it's you know, and it's it's been me, you know, him and me, yeah. you know. So, but he's very camera shy. He doesn't like to be around yeah. cameras. He doesn't want to be around the photo shoots. He just. You know, he just he just says he he just leaves it up to me and be like, hey, yeah. just just do what you gotta do. Don't don't. I'm okay with not being in there. And um, I, we try to I always try to get him in it, and he, and he doesn't want to. Yeah, he just, <laughs> he'll run away and he'll hide or he'll he'll find a way or oh he'll he'll, he'll do this. So yeah, that's um, but that's it, but that's him though. But um, again, he's 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 the guy behind a lot of this work. So a lot a lot of the work. He's 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 magic Edward. So yeah, they they asked me about the Jeep ring on my steering wheel. Yeah. Remember I fabricated mm-hmm. that here and you he helped me fabricate that mm-hmm. and paint that steering wheel because it doesn't belong in that Jeep, but now it does. Everyone's like, where you buy that? I'm like, bro, I fucking made it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I didn't buy it. And then uh, taught me how to weld some stuff. I'm still not very good, um, but I just got to practice that. But yeah, guys, we're going to get some chow. Yep. Thank you so much. Until next time, peace out. Appreciate it. Yes.